right there. What's happening? Y'all, are y'all ready? All right. All right, so this guy right here, look, real quick, off subject. This dude, Bam Margera is a hero to me, and I'm confident to everybody else in here. Yeah. I'm doing what I do right now because of Bam Margera. I've been watching this dude for 20 plus years. This guy was the original YouTuber. This guy was the original before TikTok. This, stuff, this dude was cutting VHS tapes up. This dude is the innovator of what we see now. TikTok, all that crap, that was banned. This guy did this. Y'all let this dude know. This is Bam freaking Margera. I don't know if y'all know. Like, mother, do I gotta take my shirt out? This is Bam Margera. Bam Margera, let's go! This guy is. This guy is Jackass. This guy is TKY. This dude is, the, my opinion, the greatest skater of all time. So tonight what we're going to do, we are so privileged here at Defo Comedy Streamline, Tobacco Exotica, Marco Asylum Comics, to have this man here. So I just want to let him know, I appreciate you, bam. We love you. We see what you're doing. And then we're proud of you, dude. Forget Rocky. It's about Ben Marger. So DJ Kirby, are you ready? Yeah. Yo, Ben Marger. <laughs> and Jack is manager. Yo, give it up. What up, everybody? This is my manager, Jack. And uh, he's gonna uh, do a little Q and A, but because we've been through everything together, and we just reunited, and I'm so happy to be in Florida this time because the last time I, I was you. in the Guinness Book World Records of longest Florida shuffle. If you don't know what that means. It means if the interventionist knows that you have insurance money, they will find reasons to keep you there for eternity. So, 10 rehabs back to back, floating around Florida at 90 days apiece, and four, I had the pleasure to do four mental institutions, and I realized that when you're hanging around somebody that is trying to fucking marry their own shoe or saying, why didn't you marry me, you're going to start fucking hanging out with these people. My first roommate was Kyle, and uh, I was Hey, you from Philadelphia? Yeah. You know Newark Tunnel? Yeah, it's 15 minutes from me. You know that 7-Eleven? I don't know. Maybe. Why? I used to ride my bike past there. Great fucking story, Kyle. I gotta live with your fucking ass. So anyway, Jack, let's do a little Q&A here. Um, you know, I've been with Bam for uh, 10 years, and uh, it's been a roller coaster ride, but uh, let's give it up for his girlfriend, Danny. There's a reason yeah. that he's here right now. I'm 100 days sober now, but I do love the bar environment. Somebody asked me, um, what would be the first thing you'd do to solve world peace? I was like, world peace? Are you kidding me? I love fucking drama. I was just down at the gay bar over there, and they were kicking people out. The big buff gay bouncer threw out this other thing. There's two things I like doing, kicking ass and sucking dick, and I'm about to do one of my I'm like, what do you do? I'm like, this is fucking awful. So I'm like, I love drama. As long as I'm not in it. <laughs> I think out, out of all the all the years we've been on the road, I, I, I can never remember any of this. Stuff. There's so much going on. I think. What do you think the most awkward thing that we or the awkward encounter you've had probably since we've been on the road? I mean, oh my God! I mean, well, there's so many of them, but this one wasn't on the road. This was in the comfort of my own house at Castle Bam. I woke up at midnight. To somebody kissing on my neck, I think it's my girlfriend at the time. I'm like, babe, we'll get to that in the morning. I realize she's sleeping that way right next to me. I look up, I see a silhouette of this naked chick. I'm like, what the fuck? So I turn on the light. She's already on the ground figuring herself. And she goes, the owl sent me from Jupiter. I'm like, 911. <laughs> so now I'm trying to get her the fuck out of there naked. I'm asking where her clothes are. She can't answer any of this. She's sitting there telling me that we're supposed to get married because her parents invented goats and trailers and we're meant to be together. I'm like, what? So... <laughs> 
Finally, when the police come, the gate opens, there's six police cars with the sirens on, and she sees it, freaks out, goes, oh shit, she does a naked fucking cartwheel and runs into the woods. I'm like, what's with the cartwheel? Did that, like, gain you extra speed? Like, oh shit, the fucking police car. What the fuck? So then the police show up, they are searching for her everywhere to the point where four hours went by, I'm like, I'm going to the fucking bar, I don't care anymore. They found her in the treetop casino underneath seven different blankets, and then they found all these widow carvings in there. She's been living in my fucking tree fort for four months. Holy shit, bro. And she was from Altamont. I remember that. that song right She's from Florida, yeah. That song right to the counter and it had a picture. Yeah. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, there's one airline that you're banned from, I think it's Southwest. I'm banned from a few, it's Northwest. Oh, Northwest. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, it wasn't even my fault. When Novak, who's now seven years sober, he was on a flight with me, high as hell on heroin, drunk as a skunk. And when he when he was like that, he, his pants for some reason, he never carried about, so his dick and ass would always be fucking hanging out. He's got this trash bag, this black trash bag filled with his dirty ass clothes. And he's trying to walk like this because his pants are falling down. The bag splits everywhere. All the stinky clothes are in there. All his fucking assholes in, in front of this old lady's face. He's trying to pick it up. Finally, he sits down in the exit row next to me. And the lady says, sir, in the event of a water landing, are you able to... He's like, bitch, if we're in a water landing, we're all dead. So what does it matter? Bands from Northwest. <laughs> For life. And then the one time you dared Novak to shove a rock up his ass. Well, we were in Glasgow, Scotland, and we were playing a gig, and we were in the bad part of town, and he was begging for $30, and I know that whatever the $30 was for, it wasn't for anything good, so I owed him per diem money. I go, look, if you want the $30, shove that fucking rock up your ass, and then I'll give it to you. He's like, fine, just give me the goddamn money. He shoves the rock up his ass, forgets about it for four days. He shit it out in the middle of the street, and it blew his asshole out. It looked like a fucking apricot hanging out. So he went to the emergency room, and his girlfriend is there at the time, and he, the doctor goes, I need to talk to you in private. You're his girlfriend, right? She's like, yeah. He's like, this is not just from one rock coming out of his ass. This is years and years of damage to his asshole, meaning like he's gay. He's like, I can hear you over there, doc. I used to use my asshole as a glove compartment. I've been on fucking heroin for 20 years. <laughs> Uh, the, the, one of the most crazy things that you've done that I remember, uh, and you had to, it was really awkward, was Chris Cardell. Yeah, the, it, was the, it was one second that seemed like eternity because, first of all, CKY was playing a festival in Norway, and um, we were in the green room, and Chris Cornell was playing afterwards. And we're in the green room, and the security goes, everybody needs to clear the green room because Chris Cornell's walking through, and he doesn't want to make eye contact with anybody. And I'm all hopped up on whiskey. I'm like, where is this moron? I pick his door open. He's doing his eye makeup, and he, he doesn't yell at me. He sings at me, get the fuck out of here. So then they throw me out like a movie and stay out. Next morning, I'm on a flight from Christensen, Norway, to Amsterdam, which is only one hour, and I'm with my girlfriend, and I go, Shit, we're not sitting next to each other. I'm 1A and you're 2B, whatever. It's a one hour flight. I look to my left and it's Chris Cornell, and it was just one second. I'm like, oh, fuck. I gotta sit next to him. I have no wingman to help me whatsoever. So I sit down. I go, remember me? He's like, yeah, what was that about? I'm like, well, the security said that you didn't want to make eye contact with anybody. I thought that was pretty lame. He's like, well, that's what security tends to say. I'm like, oh, so you didn't say it? I'm bam. Then we were friends, but it was one second of the most awkwardness in the world. And then, uh, dude, the list goes on. I, if somebody wants to say that a guy cannot get raped by a girl, I bet you differ because I've seen me do it. I've seen me do it. <laughs> so, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, I turned it off to her, and I was the 13th person to ever do a loop, loop on a skateboard, and I was trying for three years to do it, and I kept getting broke off. So finally, when I did it first try, after three years of trying, I'm like, I'm getting fucked up tonight. So we come to the hotel, and all the fans knew that we were staying there from the Tony Hawk Boom Boom Hawk Jam tour, and uh, 
I get in an argument with Novak because he was there for me to like carry my luggage. I tell him he's all hot up a whiskey that he's good for nothing and all this stuff. So some chick knocks on the door and I'm drunk and packed out. She's like, is Pam Margera in there? He's like, yeah, have at it. So I wake up to this girl who was pretty portly perhaps and she had this eye makeup running all down from her face from being in the hot tub. But I wake up and she's on top of me going, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm like, who the fuck are you? What was that? Get out of my room. And no back goes, that's what you get for get, being mean to me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you should tell the story about Novak. That, that fuck that girl that was so ugly. Well, <laughs> it was a lot of them. <laughs> Let's just say this. I opened up the tour bus, and um, he's holding this girl D style watching a porno. As he's, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm watching a hot girl because this bitch is me. And I'm like, dude, you are so fucked up. <laughs> he was, dude, he was the worst ever. Like, I can't believe he's completely transformed and changed. It's a miracle. Well, I know in San Antonio, I woke up and I'm like, all right, you guys go to bed. I'm going to get you at five in the morning. We're going to go to the radio station. I get up. I don't know how the fuck he picked up that girl. That's the day he got kicked off the tour because we got a knock, knock, knock at four in the morning. And I go, who is it? Tell Novak he better pay me my $400 of fucking heroin money. I'm like, what? Novak, do you owe this guy money? He's naked in the aisle, not even in his bunk. He's going, he's lying. Tell me he's lying. I'm like, you know your fucking hell. My brother's like, I have four kids. I don't need this shit. Kick him off the fucking tour. That was hard. Oh, when you got arrested in Chicago and you're like... We'll bail you out, no problem. We're like waving all the money. That's your. That, that was when I was officially fed up. I have paid for so many rehabs and so much bullshit. So I decided to stay in the hotel room that night. He went out to party at the after party. He throws red wine all over the DJ's booth and ruins his laptop. They knock on my door and the police is there saying that I'm going to get arrested if I don't pay for Novak's damages. And I'm like, I wasn't even there. I'm like, look. No, man, just get in the cop car when you're handcuffed. I'll give you the five dollars and then we'll call it a day. He gets handcuffed. He's like, damn, are you going to give him the money? I go, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy part is he still, he still got bailed out by that girl, yeah. made it to the plane, and he's like, I'm going to kill you, Jack. I'm going to fucking murder you. And I was like, damn, I'm going home. And <laughs> he made it on the plane and I went home and I said, you deal with this shit. <laughs> And then, on top of uh, Northwest being banned, I'm also banned from 6th Round Car, Avis, and uh, <laughs> the Pita Pit in Westchester. I can never have a Pita in my life. I'm Fuck really going to lose sleep over that. <laughs> but the reason why I'm banned from 6th uh, is because I rented a car in Budapest, said I'd return it in two days, and six months later, my dad got a phone call saying, where is the car? I'm like, I returned that months and months ago in Amsterdam. And they're like, Amsterdam? That's 2,000 miles away. You said you were going to return it in Budapest. And I, and I told Shit, he was my photographer. I said, look, we're late for this flight. You need to return the car. I'll get the tickets. We meet right here. We make this flight. So when he comes back, I'm like, did you return the car? He's like, yeah. I'm like, where's the receipt? He's like, I don't have one. I'm like, fuck it. Let's just go. He just parked it in the short-term parking lot of the airport, <laughs> racking up a fucking bill all day That's long. And then the car that was only worth $20,000, I had a $40,000 bill on that. <laughs> but I, I think I refuse to pay. That's why I'm banned. What about uh, Rubbish Heat when he put the, uh, the girl they had a fight with, they put the shit in your fucking bag? Remember that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she, no, she grabbed dog. She caught him cheating. Of course, his name is Rubbish Heap, and he's in a band called Leftover Crack. <laughs> so, <laughs> she gets she, and she gets dog shit from the dog park down and puts it in my bag thinking it's his. That's what happened. <laughs> and that was when you said... We can't go anywhere. We can't get on the plane. So let's take a helicopter. Bam, we just made five grand. It's five grand to get on the helicopter. Oh, I took a lot of helicopters. But <laughs> when I say he got caught cheating, now this isn't just with one girl. And if you're on the tour bus, the back room is mine. It's off limits. No one's allowed to be in there. And the tour manager, who wasn't you at the time, says, Bam, you're going to be really mad. I go, why? He's like, Rubber Sheep is back there. I was like, is he, have, is he with a girl? He's like... Oh, uh, he's with a few of them. Oh, that motherfucker. I kicked the door in. He's, first of all, there's two twin 
girls making out with each other and the mom is blowing them. I'm like, this is so fucked up. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna let, I'm not even mad. This has not even happened before in life. <laughs> His girlfriend saw those videos and she came up, she was furious with you. Oh, I don't like this is not what he's like. And I'm like, we're in Chicago and he's asking to suck everybody off the bar to get coke. And I'm like, he hasn't changed. He goes, I'll make out with your boyfriend, whatever. I just want cocaine. And I was like, get the fuck away from me. I don't have any. Well, I don't know. What, what else do you have? Any, any questions? Anybody want to ask them anything? Well, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I go to bed at 10 o'clock at night these days, and I wake up at 6 in the morning to hit the gym, so I'm exhausted. So I'm going to do a little signing over here, and then i got to go to Orlando in the morning. But, man, it is nice to be in Florida and not in the fucking shuffle. Love you, babe. Man, yeah. love you, too. Love you, babe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, get this right. Yeah, anybody have any questions? I have no filter, I'll answer any. What's Phil's dick look like? What's whose? What's Phil's dick look like? I wouldn't even, he can't even see it himself. <laughs> yeah. 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 How pissed yeah. off is your parody? Uh, yes, Tyler. Yes, <laughs> best of my life. Best memory from the guys from Jackass. Well, man, there's a ton, but um, actually... But there's a lot of things that we film on Jackass that will never make it to MTV, and this is one of them, but it was so fucked up and funny. So Dave England is at Venice Beach. He's got one of those sketch things, you know, like, hey, I'll sketch your face for whatever amount. So this 80-year-old lady agrees to do it, only for him to reveal, a, like, a stick figure of her all naked with a ring in his pussy, and I was like, swat. And she just goes, you need church to show those pants now. MTV is like, this will never be shown on TV, ever. We did have one skit he wanted to do. He wanted to fill a pool, baby that kitty pool, amazing. full of piss, and blindfold everybody and have them bob for apples, and they said, fuck no. Well, I also wanted to do the Evander Holyfield Redemption. I was sipping on red wine on the airplane, and I'm like, you know what? Mike Tyson bit off Evander Holyfield's ear. Why don't I get in a boxing ring with Evander Holyfield, and he bites off my ear? And somebody's like, you're willing to do that? I'm like, fuck yeah. You know the street creds I'll have? I have a missing ass ear. How did that happen? I have one question. What question? <laughs> How many times do you have to show your booty cheeks? What? Your most awkward moment. Thank oh, God. No. Well, awkward moment, that was the naked chick. I, dude, there's so I'm many trying. awkward moments, but um. Oh, wait, what did you say? That was a good question over here. Uh, <laughs> oh, my butt cheek. I got the dick form branded on my ass, and um. Yeah, I kept jumping, so it was like a hologram dick, and that shit was there for six years and finally faded. And I can tell you this, that hurt, but is what, is what hurt worse was I rocked the same pants for 10 days straight creating a staph infection, and it hurt like a motherfucker. Sexy, that's so sexy. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, we're going to do signing afterwards and pictures over there. Give us yeah. five Thanks, everybody, for coming out. We'll be here. Come on.